Hello everybody and welcome to The Real Housewives Edit. My name is Elle and I am here to talk about the two loves of my life, editing and housewives. Well you guys, I put it up in my community tab, but I watched this scene on The Real Housewives of Potomac and I literally had to keep rewinding it because it was like confusing to me, it was so well done to me, but also like not well done at the same time. There were so many components to it that just made me crazy, but also made me so excited for the franchise that I was like, I cannot wait to discuss this episode with you guys. So here we go. I'm going to be doing kind of like a two part breakdown, not because I just want you guys to come back and watch the second video, but mainly because I need to get it out quickly. So I need to edit the first part send it out and then I'll edit the second part and send it out. I love doing the longer videos for you guys, but as you know, they take much longer to edit and I always like to get something out for you guys, at least while the episode is kind of fresh in your mind. So without any further speaking from me, let's just jump right into it. Wanna get shit done? Yeah. I'll put my money on charades. All right. Okay. So we start with Mia and Peter Thomas who never <laughs> seems to shy away from a camera moment, which I respect as a businessman, obviously, by saying he has beef with Wendy and having them all come to the restaurant, it got his restaurant to be prominently displayed on the Real Housewives franchise, which to me feels like, yeah, it's a, it's a priority for him. So you know what, do your thing, Peter, go for it. Here he is, he's talking to Mia and they're talking about Wendy and Mia is, you know, taking down Wendy and they cut to Wendy at the actual dinner table. I've talked to you guys about this before. Anytime they have a character sort of talking about someone else, they're always going to give us a little bit of place by cutting to that character and kind of, showing us where all the players are. It's also like foreshadowing some sort of tension because the look on Wendy's face is tense. And of course Mia's talking about her to her future or potential business partner. It's just all bad. When this conversation is going down, when Mia is acting like this with Peter, we should as an audience take away the fact that we actually saw in the preview that she throws the drink on her. Feel the sort of tension that's building here just with Mia talking to Peter before anything has gone down with her and Wendy. My money, my All right. Tell Gia say what's up. I know, he loves okay. it. Okay. It took a while for Mia and I to gel. I thought that was kind of an odd moment. What's hard about this scene for me is that I love Mia a lot as a housewife. That's always my clarification as a housewife when I say I love these people. I've, I've had some people be like, how can you love her? She's this. And I'm like, I, it's not like I love her like I like you know, want to be friends with her. I just love her as a housewife. With Mia in particular, I just think she's a really, really great housewife. She kind of checks a lot of the boxes for me personally. That's just my opinion. So I really love her and I really love what she brings to the show. She really, really gets into like, Peter's my family. Don't talk about my husband. Family means a lot to her, I think, from her background and her upbringing. Even here, when she's talking to Peter and Peter says, Tell Gia say what's up. And then she says, I know, he loves okay. you. To me, that was such a strange response to just say hi to your husband for me. It's almost like she's responding to a different line in her head, like, almost like she heard him say like, I love you guys so much. I think it's such like a normal human thing that sometimes we are so wrapped up in a story or whatever that we will actually put a sentence or words coming out of someone else's mouth just to fit our own narrative. And not that she, you know, not that her narrative with Peter being their close friend is fake, but I do think she's holding onto it so tight. And she really, anytime she has someone who she considers family, it's like she's really holds onto it and, and has like a deep passion for it, maybe because of where she came from. Just a thought. It took a while for Mia and I to gel. Mia can be a bit much when you first meet her. I try to explain that to her sometimes. I'm like, Mia, you're, you're a lot. Okay, so this is such a great example of setting up. Like if you can think of like a volleyball game, you set up the ball and then you spike it over the net. They didn't have to leave in the scene. Obviously Jacqueline's sort of a side player. Um, I'm really liking her by the way. I don't like how Mia's treating her like garbage and I love that kind of storyline. Here she's talking about how Mia can be a lot and how a lot of her friends 
friends put up with the BS. I think that's kind of what she's saying. Like, you know, I don't put up with her BS, you know, so a lot of other people do. Um, I definitely wouldn't be friends with her if we had just met as adults. Like all those things are crazy. She's definitely setting up to us and to all the women some foreshadowing that Mia is a lot, even though we know it, it's still kind of planting this thought in our head. So then when Mia comes in after this whole thing, talking to Peter, the tension is just being built. That's all that's really happening. And one thing I want to point out is the editors cut back to Ashley sort of eating while she's listening. I've talked about this in previous videos, but I think they cut to housewives eating or drinking whenever they're listening to some tea being spilt. To me, it's like the equivalent of like sipping tea while you're listening to some gossip. And that's kind of what's happening here. Because I've known her since we were kids, oh, it's okay. Oh, oh. But I'm like, if I would have met you as an adult, will we be friends? I'm not sure. Oh, really? I don't know, because we both have strong personalities. Where's Jackie Tommy? Right, so Ashley's just listening and eating, and then the music comes in when she says, But I'm like, if I would have met you as an adult, will we be friends? I'm not sure. Oh, really? I don't know. It's really setting some tension here. She likes to be bossy over me. We <laughs> heard. Oh, that's funny. I'm probably her only friend that doesn't go with all the shit she got going. Hi, ladies, I'm back. Okay, so as soon as she ends that, they have a big, like, sort of cymbal sound. And then we see Mia, you know, strutting in, looking gorgeous. I think her dress is so pretty with her hair and her lips and all that stuff. She's walking in and it's right after this whole thing with her friend. Now, did that happen exactly like that? Did the friend finish her last sentence and Mia walked in? I highly doubt it, but the editors made it look like that and made it look like the timing was perfect. Um, and that's just the magic of editing and it makes it really fun for us to watch. Hey ladies, I'm back. What was the big conversation about? Okay, see, this is why I love Mia. She's just a great housewife. Giselle is stirring it up as usual. She asks the question. What was the big conversation about? And then Mia does this big eye flick. And as the eye flicks over to Wendy, they do the sort of knife sharpening stinger sound that we've all come to know. It's emphasizing, you know, what we're seeing in our ears, if that makes sense. Ah. Who are you sad on? So early I was on the FaceTime call with- So all the little reaction shots to Sharice and then Mia licking her finger. Because this scene takes a big turn where there's sort of an explosion, the tension is just being built and built and built. And we've talked about this a lot, you know, on this channel, but there's so many ways to build tension. And one of them is these reaction shots, you know, coming from the women, adding these little sound effects that enhance the reaction shots, putting space in there, taking music out, putting music in. You can feel it as you're watching that tension is being built and if you strip away everything that I just said right there it's probably just kind of like a boring sitting there around a table scene if you can picture it with all those extra things we as an audience are definitely leaning in FaceTime call with Peter I told him who was coming and he said he got beef with ship So I love that sort of crescendo of music. He got beef with ship. You know, they're kind of crescendoing while she's talking and talking and talking. And then when she says you, she points to Wendy and Wendy's reaction comes right on that big stinger. Coming back from a commercial break, we get this alligator, crocodile. Okay, we're in Florida. It's an alligator, right? Okay, wait, you guys are gonna correct me. I know I got this wrong. Alligator, crocodile coming up out of the water, the fade into color, the fade out of color, it's ominous. Just like in that episode before that I covered where they had the sound of a crow or a raven. <laughs> This is the same thing, we get an animal that's sort of like a dangerous animal. And then we get the time lapse of the whole Miami scene going down. It's that contrast. It's like, there's all this lively, you know, life is happening out here, but what's going on underneath? And we're about to watch. Peter say, he got beef with ship. Oh, what is what, the what's the beef about? I don't have beef with men, so Ooh. what's the beef? Wendy, don't, don't start it. 
Don't start okay. what? I don't have that much. So the reason I really wanted to cover this scene and why I find it so interesting is that it jumped all over the place in terms of like who was at fault for this whole thing. Now I would never ever say violence on someone is like their fault, but I'm just saying who is at fault for sort of the start of this fight being heightened. Mia is clearly at fault just for walking into the situation. First of all, talking behind Wendy's back to Peter and then walking into the situation, giving that side eye, just being a general like mean girl, not straight up, acting totally immature with this information. You know, we know all of those things. Sometimes I'll be watching and I'm like, well, why didn't Mia just go to Wendy, like pull her aside and, you know, say, go talk to Peter. I think part of the game of watching Housewives is going like, I can't believe they did it that way, but then we can't look away. It's a strange thing. I could go into this really far, but I'm not going to. Mia comes in and she's acting totally immature. She says the thing to Wendy. He got beef with shit. Her coming back with that response. I don't have beef with men, so. I wonder if she came to her first saying like, wait, what do you mean? And they cut that out just because they wanted to escalate the, the argument quicker. And because I told you guys this on my community tab, I do think there's a bit of a sneaky edit going on here and I'm gonna get into it further as we go along. And so, Ooh. what's the beef? Wendy, don't, tr don't start it. Don't, don't start what? It. I don't have- That's my family. Don't start it. What are you trying to do right no. now? No, 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 no. You're doing too much. No. If he had beef, what then you he could call my you? husband. So what's the beef? So apparently you guys are doing some type of deal. Okay, so there's that back and forth between Wendy and Mia, which feels very, authentic and organic to me just the like Mia says something Wendy says something Mia says something it feels like that's all kind of exactly how it went down what they're adding in there are the reactions of the other women which are very still I always think that when the women have a very still reaction it tells me that on set in the actual scene the tension was super high and I imagine that's because you know just how you can feel tension as opposed to just when you watch it you can feel it when you're in the room and I think they were really feeling it Hey, he ain't heard nothing back. What's the status of your potential business partnership with Peter? Has he sent you Yes, actually, no, not to sign, but to review. Okay. So instead of just having Wendy explain herself to Mia at the table, they obviously, they cut to confessional. Has he sent you any paperwork to Yes, partner? actually, no, not to sign, but to review. Could Wendy have explained that whole situation at the table to Mia? Yes, maybe that did happen and they cut it out and just put this confessional in there instead. That is a really smart move because if it was just back and forth and argument and argument and Mia says this and Wendy says this, we might kind of get bored and check out, but instead they switch up the scene completely. They make the music a little bit lighter, a little bit more curious. Let me quote it correctly. And we go to this confessional where she's looking up something on her phone, looking up some receipts, which are always fun for us. Let me quote it correctly. Yes, yes, he owes me something. Peter sent me over the first red line to the landlord. I wanted to conduct a site visit on the place for the potential restaurant because I had not been. So I haven't heard from him since that text message. So anytime they bring up a receipt and they're super calm about it, I don't know about you guys, but I felt like this was a super valid receipt. He sent over a red line contract. She said, great, can we do a site visit before I sign it? I mean, that's really what she's implying. Like, I'm not gonna sign anything until we do a site visit. And he says, yeah, we can see about that. Okay, then I'm waiting on you. He wanted the cameras at bar one. Again, can we fault him for it? You would think that you would let him know you were coming, right? Is he my f***ing man? What are no, you talking about? <laughs> what? He's opening what? up his, his opportunity for you to learn, study, and be a mentee. So I feel like just <laughs> if I was editing this, this is, I mean, this is gold. Mia to me, I think when I say I love her as a housewife, I think she's just gold as a housewife because she gives so much. This argument, everything that she's coming up with here is so like, whoa, like out of, I don't want to say out of left field, but all of a sudden she's taking it on like a personal attack on her family that she didn't, you know, tell Peter she was going to be in town. She's running all the way in the wrong direction, but she, she's looking back and she knows maybe she's running in the wrong direction, but she's like, I'm not turning around. There's something very impulsive about Mia in terms of how she does her arguments that I think as an editor, I would be so thrilled because she's going to start taking this train 
to the end and it's gonna make it a really strong edit for me if I was, you know, working on this. That makes sense. The only man I let know that I'm coming into town is my husband. I, I love how they cut to the peanut gallery. Of course, I'm sure it happened in the moment, but why would they add it in as the editors? Why would they add in her reaction? It's because we have to kind of know like, who else at the table is feeling what kind of way. All we have are sort of these still reaction shots from them up until now, but then when we get Giselle saying, that makes sense. we as an audience are gonna go, oh, like people are on Mia's side, interesting. You need I to don't get past that, that. I don't because there is no this. feelings in business. business. Sweetie, maybe you talk to other men like that, but of course I don't I do. need I to. Sit in a I don't know what you talk about. All men, okay? okay? So I'm the only female, so black female. At okay, so, <laughs> This is such a perfect example of like a housewife fight. It turns from like a basic detail. You didn't call this guy and tell him you're gonna be in town or you didn't respond back to him. And then Mia starts going into- Do I sit in a I don't boardroom table with all about. men, okay? okay? So I'm the only female, so black female at the boardroom table. It's so housewives to me just to all of a sudden be like, okay, well, I'm, I'm gonna take this fight that had nothing to do with that and start bringing up what I do right and my accolades and everything great about me. It's just wonderful. The only female, black female at the boardroom table. Girl, I'm the only black so, female that's a professor so at Johns Hopkins and I'm the so youngest you professor at Johns Hopkins. So, so don't tell me how to be a boss because Andy. I am a fing boss. You understand? Okay. So, of course, then Wendy has to do it back and talk about her, you know, accolades. Only black so, female that is a professor so at Johns Hopkins, and I'm the so youngest you professor at Johns Hopkins. So, so don't tell me how to be a boss. Because because they also pulled away so you could see the wide shot of the entire table. And I believe that's because maybe they didn't have a great camera on Karen, but they did want to get that little reaction of Karen. She's leaning back and kind of hear what she's saying, but you can kind of tell that she's sort of like, I want to stay out of this, but they did it in the wide shot just because maybe they didn't have a close up of her doing that. Balls. You understand that? She this doesn't even the... want to hear it. No, right? because you're talking to me about a man that's not my husband. Why do I get it's no, business? Why are you talking about your husband? So Who does it have to do with a do? marriage? That's weird. Weird. Don't tell me what the <laughs> okay. So, interestingly enough, they're on the same side of the table and they're arguing, right? We get a lot of arguments on opposite sides of tables just in Housewives history, but here they are on the same side of the table. I love this shot where they have, you know, Wendy in the background fighting towards Mia and Mia is kind of blurry. And then they pull the focus where Mia is in focus and she's looking at everyone else and Wendy turns blurry. It's just like so cinematic to me. That's such nerd stuff, but I love seeing those little shots thrown in there. And then they just whip the camera right over and we get to see more of the reaction of Giselle. And we're kind of seeing, again, these women are siding with Mia, like Mia's confiding in them. As an audience member, I'm watching this going, Mia, you walked into this and you started this and derailed it. I would definitely be like upset at someone, first of all, coming in and talking about something that's business to me. I would be upset with Peter. I would be upset with the whole thing. This is gonna mess up a lot. To do. Don't tell me that. Maybe that's how you and your husband play. How me and my husband play. We don't play like that. Period. I am so confused. You know you what? You telling me I need to call Wendy. some guy and tell him I'm coming to town? I'm not in town for business. Oh, oh, oh. oh gosh. Okay. I. <laughs> Wow. So of course they had to pull away to the wide shot to see her throw the drink so we could see both women in frame when she throws the drink. In my second part video, I'm going to break it down even more of why I think there was sort of a sneaky edit, but it starts here. As far as the narrative's going of what they've edited, Wendy is being, you know, defensive about this, this conversation because she's like, I don't tell any other man when I'm coming into town. She's really, really harping on that. To me, personally, she's not really talking about Mia, she says, Sweetie, maybe you talk to other men like that, but of course I, don't I do. Need I, to. I don't really get that she's saying rude things about Mia's relationship and husband. I've watched it like a hundred times now, and I still have kept my position. Is it perfect? No, but I don't feel like she's like attacking her husband. Okay, so that's gonna set up just from an editorial standpoint when they do this sort of edit later on in the episode, which I'm gonna cover in a second part of a video. Just keep that thought in your head as we move on here. No, 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 too close to me, too close to me. Take your ass, take all that one No, get up, that's what you want, Okay, so 
They have Karen getting up. They show a three shot of the ladies on the other side of the table looking totally nonplussed. Like they don't even get up. They're not even that concerned. I was really confused by that reaction shot. I was like, I wonder if that was from there or if it was from earlier and they just want to show that these women don't really care about this at all. I thought about that for a second, but I was like, no, this is from then. <laughs> Those three women love that this is going down and that they can act like totally above it all and be silent and still on the other side of the table. Of course, we get our production security coming in. I'm very upset that we didn't get his name. We know Doug, we know Eric. Why is it just production security? We need to know, we need to give this man his due. He comes in, he stops Mia, like he, he becomes a, a character in this. Let's keep going. No, I mean, you are not going to talk about my husband and Nobody how Nobody was operate. talking about your yeah, husband. by the That's table, what Wendy. And what the are you gonna do if I don't get the out? What the what are you going to do? Okay, so again with this <laughs> production security, of course we love a breaking of the fourth wall. From a production standpoint, I know that they have security on staff now probably 24 7 with these women because they don't want any lawsuits they don't want anyone getting hurt he comes in he puts his body in between the two of them side eyeing wendy like do i need to come around with the other hand he's got one hand on mia he's like a trained professional when it comes to housewives because he knows i need to keep one eye on each of them i just i love him i production security i wish we had a name she's what very antagonistic if you don't get her out i swear to god we are too hot okay Okay, so that was a weird cut to me. So first, of course, they cut to Robin where she's saying she's very antagonistic, which was like, wait, didn't Mia just throw something at Wendy? Then we come around to this other side where we see Mia says, you don't get her out. I swear to God. In that short clip, I did not see a camera person on the other side. But remember, we were just on the other side of the table and now we're on this side, which makes me think, and I could be wrong, but maybe it's the same camera person now on the other side. Maybe there was a lot more that happened in between the last moment that we saw where the camera was on the other side of the table and now here on the production security and Mia. I'm just always curious. I'm like, why, you know, we lost a camera on the other side because I don't see it in frame or maybe are they hiding behind the bushes? Uh, these are all questions I have. To be acting like this, okay? Can I get it? Yeah. I'm TMZ yeah, right so now. Okay, Robin says I'm TMZ. They do the sort of, you know, parody on the TMZ logo. I've heard, seen some comments online where people are like, why is Robin filming when there's all these Bravo cameras? And that was my first thought too. I'm like, why are you acting like you don't have cameras around? But what Robin's really doing, to be honest, is holding the editors very accountable in this moment. You can picture it, right? If she has all this stuff on camera and the editors decide they are going to cut it a certain way. She could always say, you know, I got this footage and I'm going to show the real thing, you know, at the reunion or something like that. I think the last thing that Bravo wants, especially in sort of a fight situation, is to show that editors picked sides. I would venture to say that when Robin has her phone out, that what we're seeing on screen is exactly what happened. Other women and men. Well my favorite Karen moment of the entire season. Okay. I'm confused. My birthday. Just brilliant. What they're doing is they're cutting between Robin's camera and the actual, you know, production cameras. It feels like we're watching some Instagram stories or something, and it feels like we're watching like our typical show. It's just sort of a fun way to watch this and watch it through the lens, you know, of one of our ladies and watch it through the actual lens. Now, after the drink is thrown, I believe Wendy is going after her and her husband. This is not just to tell you guys my opinion on this, more because when I get into the second part of this whole video and talk about sort of the sneaky edit thing that I think might be going on, it's going to be relevant, so. For that, since you want to throw a drink, you're such a boss. What boss throws drink? What boss throws drink? Boss throws drink. It's not worth it. <laughs> Okay, 
So we have the two sides of the you know table right now. We have Jacqueline, Mia's friend, you know, telling her it's not worth it. We have Robin and Giselle over there filming Wendy, like not trying to help the situation at all. A true friendship, you know, with Robin and Giselle, they wouldn't just be pulling out their phone to film, although they just don't like her. I think that's just really it. They're just trying to catch her and make her look really, really bad. But I feel like just anyone like should go in and just be like, Wendy, just chill, like just stop. But from an editing perspective, they're really going back and forth between these two sides of the table. Not that they're on opposite sides of the actual argument. It's really just to like pull tension between the two sides. Mia and Wendy are yelling and talking about each other, but they're not looking at each other. It's like wrestlers or, or boxers or whatever. They're like go in their corners and they're not looking at each other and they're like loading. Like that's the feeling I'm getting. There's some loading quality here by them going back to their respective corners. I'm just like, oh my gosh, the tension is, is high. You thought I was gonna fight you? You're baiting and you're being antagonistic. If we don't, if you don't want to fight, then she stop. Did. Oh, so you're telling me to stop, but she threw a drink on me, Robin. Okay, so, you know, Robin says, You're baiting and you're being antagonistic. While she's actually filming, which to me, I believe is actually baiting, but you know, I digress. And then when they have the moment where Wendy goes to Robin and breaks down and says like, oh, you're telling me basically that I'm doing something wrong. The music sort of does that, like, I call it like a toy running out of battery feel. Oh, so you're telling me to stop, but she threw a drink on me, Robin. No. Before it was kind of driving and then it's broken down because I believe this is sort of an important moment where Wendy's going at Robin being like, how dare you say this? It's going to be important to think about this sentiment later on when Wendy, you know, at the end of the episode calls them all, you know, apologists. Robin, no. Robin, no. Robin, no. Robin, no. Robin, no. Do you want to fight? Then fight. If you don't you want to fight, drink on me over So all it's really doing is sort of like character development, relationship development for us to see that Wendy is now upset with Robin. They're already in a fight from before, but now there's even tension between the two of them. Be over Peter Thomas because you f***ing up? No. Because you're f***ing Peter you know Thomas. Okay, That's why you wait, do a wait, drink wait, on wait, me? Wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. This is what we're not okay, and then Wendy devolves into like, yeah, total like, <laughs> she's just like, I feel like she got activated and there's just no stopping her and that drink really started it all. I know the editors looking at this footage were like, wow, we don't need to build anything. She's building all by herself. Okay. Okay. You threw a drink on me because you're a f***ing Peter? Oh. Somebody? Oh God, now you're making up stuff. Down the tea is real hot. You threw a drink on me oh, over somebody? Not See, these are the moments with Wendy that I'm like, oh, this is why she's on the show. She, I think, is sensing some weakness in Mia because obviously Mia's, I think, original sort of thing towards Wendy was crazy. And then she threw the drink. So Mia's really so much at fault. Of course, the perfect thing for Wendy would be to just sit down and be like, you know what, I'm taking high road. But if she did that, would we all be watching 15 years later? I don't know. Not be your husband. You so corny. Pray to face, bitch. No. What you're not you know gonna what do, what you gonna do. Oh wow, when she really, yeah, she went for her looks there, she's walking away. I feel like we've all had those moments in our lives where we're like a runaway train. Maybe it's just me. There's something to that with Wendy right now. There's a runaway train quality. As the editors are watching this footage, I'm sure they're like, oh, just let it play out. Very few cuts needed, except maybe just cut back to the ladies' reactions, cut back to this, cut back to the ladies' reactions. And we watched like the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, like the most recent season, when we see some real breakdowns, like especially with some of the Erica stuff where they're breaking down and really arguing. It felt like big gaps were missing. It felt like they were trying to do their best to heighten it because it was a lot of she said, she said, she said, she said. But Potomac ladies and, and this type of thing right here just feels like it just doesn't need a lot. They don't need a lot of sound. They don't need a lot of like punctuation with, with stingers or anything like that. They don't need a lot of heightening and building of the conflict because it's, it's all there. What you gonna f***ing do? Oh, what you gonna f -ing do? Really? Let her go. She ain't gonna do nothing. Just chill. Let her go. Okay? Pray the fit. I'm fine. Did, did you get something on you? She got on my hair, but I got, I got wet and wavy, so I'm okay. Robert, turn that off. Okay, so of course I love seeing a camera person walk in the background chasing after Mia, um, which I'm like, oh, now we get to go see Mia. Then they cut back to Robin's footage and you see, you know, the grand dame being like, just turn that off. Like, it's not, just stop it. No, we ain't gonna have no he say, she say bullshit. Your friend threw a drink on me.
me. Let's be fair. She definitely threw some shots fired when she threw a drink. If there anyone throws a drink on me, it's and it's it's going down. How did it miss you, Karen? Girl, because God loves me. She did the Matrix. She was Neo in that bitch. Okay, so now we're about to get into this sequence that I think is really cute. So what they did really here is they overlaid the stuff, you know, all the numbers and letters that were in the matrix. Actually, it's just numbers. It's just zero and one. I didn't, I, I'm not like, that's not really my genre. But they basically just overlaid um, this and made the opacity low so you could still see the ladies' faces in it. When Karen raises her eyebrows, they give her a big like stinger, sort of a sound effect. And then when the drink is thrown, they slow down the footage to like 1%. Anytime you are slowing down footage, you usually, you know, like 50% is basically, it's going in half time. In this, they really wanted to show every single frame of the water being splashed on her. You know, again, they still have this sort of matrixy green over it and the sort of matrix sound effects going on. And not only did they slow it down, but they sort of put this like distortion in it as well to make it look like almost underwater. And then they did that funny kind of like bright stinger when she looks at the camera or when she kind of looks over and does that little face. I really need to. It's just sort of to emphasize and it's definitely for comic relief. Why do you think they put in that sequence there? I would love to hear in the comments. If you've watched my channel a lot, you know the answer. I'm gonna give you a couple hints. We've just had a very intense fight, right? These women have gone at it. It's a little bit dark because we're kind of like, oh, we don't like the fighting, we don't like the physical stuff, but we also can't look away. We also kind of love it at the same time. We've gotten a security guard in there. You know, we've heightened, we've heightened, they've gone back back at each other. There's a lot of this height and height and height. And why are we throwing in this matrix sequence besides the editors just having some fun? You guys tell me in the comments. I know you're going to know the tactic and why they're doing it. So I really look forward to your answers. I'm going to be doing a part two on this exact fight, but I'm going to try to edit this, get it out by Thanksgiving so that you guys can have something to watch in between family time, whether you have fun with family time or you don't have fun with family time, or if you are alone on Thanksgiving, I am going to be your Thanksgiving <laughs> partner. I have so much gratitude for you guys and for this journey that we've been on this year. So until part two of this crazy fight. You're baiting and you're being antagonistic. I'm confused, it's my birthday.